Welcome back everyone. You guys know I had to do these quick comparisons. So the iPhone SE was just announced. So I want to do a, or the iPhone SE 2020 or the iPhone SE 2, whatever you want to call it. I want to do a quick comparison between this and the iPhone 11. I will be ordering and purchasing the iPhone SE. I'll also be giving one away to you guys. So make sure you lock down to the channel so you guys don't miss that giveaway. But the iPhone SE, when it first came out, when it's coming out, it's going to be costing $399 for that base model. The iPhone 11 costs $699 for that base model, brand new. So there's quite a bit of price gap between these. There's about $300. But these two technically are the cheapest, newest iPhones you can purchase. The older ones, the 10 or the 8 and A+. Plus, I don't think the 8's being sold anymore. But those ones were the older generations from like last year or two years ago. From like two years ago to three years ago. The iPhone 11 and the iPhone SE are in the same type of release year. So let's go and see what the major differences are between them. Now honestly, if you have all the money in the world, go for the iPhone 11. That one is probably the better phone. Really the main advantage of the iPhone SE is that it's cheaper and it's in that smaller body, which a lot of people prefer. Now on the front, the iPhone 11 has that 6.1 inch liquid retina panel, which is pretty good, you know, 828 by 1792. And I think it's a pretty good panel at the end of the day it really brings a lot to the table i kind of hated on it before but you know now it's pretty good uh, I'll, I'll admit whereas on the iphone se 2020 we have a 4.7 inch 750p panel and i'll be honest i can't even believe i'm saying iphone se 2020 or iphone se 2 it's so weird saying that i'm so not used to it now we also have true tone technology on that display as well which is really really awesome and i love seeing that and if the iphone se 2's panel is anything like the iphone 8's then it's probably going to be a pretty decent panel at the end of the day we have that fingerprint sensor on the front which is really cool but those are pretty much all the differences that we know right now i mean we already kind of know what it's going to look like everything like that we've already talked about both these type of body styles for a very long time now in terms of the actual certifications the iphone 11 had ip68 dust and water resistance where you can go up to two meters of water for 30 minutes the iphone se 2020 has ip67 dust and water resistance so the same as the iphone 8s you can go up to one meter of water for 30 minutes and it's still pretty good i would say you know it's still good enough for a lot of people there's really nothing like too crazy <laughs> in there in terms of that in terms of software they're both going to be lasting for about the same exact software variants since they both have the same chipset that would pretty much confirm that which is not a bad thing at all both these phones are going to be lasting for many many more years so there's really no point in even like freaking out about that at all in terms of specs inside they both have that apple a13 bionic chip both have hexacore cpus however there's a little bit of difference when it comes down to the ram as far as we know right now i'm assuming that the iphone se 2020 has three gigs of ram it's not been confirmed yet so you know once i do my full comparison i'll have the full spec sheet this is just the spec sheets as we have right now since nobody's gotten their hands on the iphone se 2020 and that's usually how the case is cool thing though is that they have the same storage variant models so 64 for the base model 128 for the mid-tier model and then 256 for that top tier model and what i can tell you about the performances is that iphone se 2020 if it has the same amount of ram could potentially be faster than the iphone 11 it's not confirmed yet there's no way to verify this yet but once we get our hands on it i i cannot wait to test them and see which one is the faster one between them because the iphone 11 is faster than my iphone 11 pro and i think that has a lot to do with the screen and the screen resolution so i guess we'll see what happens when we get our hands on it but the iphone se is going to be a very very good performing device at the end of the day the bigger difference is kind of rely on the camera so we have a dual camera set up on the iphone 11 to 12 megapixel sensors and a single 12 megapixel sensor on the iphone se 2020 and as far as we know i mean it's looking like the iphone 11 will still be the superior camera you can still do 4k at 60 on those but you have portrait mode now on the iphone se 2020 which is really cool a weird thing is on the front camera we have a 12 megapixel sensor on the iphone 11 but a 7 megapixel camera on the iphone se 2020 as far as we know right now and we still can only shoot 1080p videos where we can do 4k at 60 on that front facing camera on the iphone 11 now these specs for the iphone se 2020 are subject to change so they might not come out so not a big deal, but that's something we will have to test when we get our hands on it. In terms of battery life, both will have wireless charging. Obviously, the iPhone 11 has been out. I still would imagine that the iPhone 11 will have the better battery life since it has a 3,110 mAh battery. With the iPhone SE 2020, Apple didn't mention anything about the battery life, so we really don't know the size yet, but we will once my full review comes out. So as of right now, that's kind of the quick little comparison between both of them. If you want to pre-order the iPhone SE 2020, I will leave one link down below so you can pre-order it from Apple's website. If you want to purchase an iPhone 11, I will leave one link down from Amazon so you can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it. Can't wait for this phone to come out. Like I said, I'll be giving one away once I get my hands on it. 
hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys could check it out. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.